Hello everyone, my name is Brendan Kolzat. I'm a, an assistant professor at the Lille Catholic University in France, as well as a research associate at the University of East Anglia in the UK, where I'm part of um, the Global Environmental Justice Research Group. Let me, let me first of all apologize for not being in Sydney. I would have loved to, to attend uh, the conference and interact directly with you, but it wasn't possible this time. But my website is, is appearing on the screen now. Uh, so if you have comments or questions relating to my talk, please do get in touch. I'm going to, to present a paper titled uh, Decolonizing Environmental Justice that I've written with a colleague, Lina Alvarez, who is based at the University of Louvain in, in Belgium. The point of departure of this paper is this quote by Martinez Allier in 2002, in which he, he envisions that the concept of environmental justice can, can potentially be useful in the global south if environmental justice adapts to contexts that are different from those uh, in the US where it, where it emerged. Now, since, since this quote has been quite some work by E.J. scholars to expand the concepts beyond it, its theoretical, conceptual and its geographic boundaries, and yet research has, has shown that, that conceptual E.J. work has largely remained a Western endeavor, meaning that the environment and the justice of environmental justice are often defined only through, through Western concepts. Empirical justice uh, work, however, increasingly takes place in the context of the global south. And the result of this is that there is a tendency to transpose Western concepts and framework um, to the global south, running the risk of, of either being ineffective or producing um, environmental injustices which run deeper and are more perverse than, than the sort of apparent ecological conflicts. So with this in mind, it, it's quite remarkable that despite the historic relationship with, with, um, of environmental justice with racial issues, despite the academic diversification of environmental justice as a concept, and despite the increasing geographic focus on the global south, there's been surprisingly little engagement with, uh, with decolonial studies. There's been a whole bunch of, of new terms popping up, such as um, subaltern environmentalism, environmentalism of the poor, post-colonial environmental justice, uh, third world environmental justice, just sustainability, empty belly environmentalism, etc. And, and these overlap in part with some of the problems we identify in, in, in the paper, but none of these have engaged directly with, with decolonial theory. So what we try to do in this paper is applying what, what Nelson Maldonado Torres calls a decolonial reduction. And this reduction aims at, at making explicit um, epistemological limitation of dominant approaches, in our case, environmental justice. It's just a fancy way of saying that what we want to do is try and identify some of the colonial pitfalls an environmental scholar may encounter when addressing justice concerns. So I don't have time here to, to discuss the whole theory, uh, decolonial theory, but, but briefly it draws on the work of mostly Latin American scholars such as Anibal Quijano, Enrique Dussel and others, but it has roots all the way down to people like Franz Fanon and, and William Du Bois. And the general point that, the, that these authors make is that following colonization understood as, as the political and historic moment that ended with, with political independence of the last colonies in the second half of the 20th century, we've now entered a phase of coloniality. And this coloniality is the logic, the metaphysics, the ontology, the, the matrix of power that sustained colonization, um, but is still present today long after formal political independence and it's still present in different forms related to power, related to knowledge and to subjective being. So building on this, this body of knowledge, uh, we're, we're making three main points in the paper. One, in some cases, the solution of distribution is not a solution at all and can amount to actually distributing harm. Two, each, each literature drawing on recognition theory does not offer the tools to, to think of solutions beyond the state and, and downplays the importance of psychological processes. 
three, uh, EJ scholars have an ambivalent position when it comes to their epistemology. I can only cover these in a very superficial way here, but I can share the paper with those who are interested to, to know more, of course. So the first colonial pitfall that we identify is related to the use of environmental equity, understood as the proper allocation of benefits and burden of, of environmental exploitation. Um, this stems from the fact that, that EJ struggles in North and South may be based on, on different ontologies. Um, and the problem arises when the very idea of environmental distribution may be in incompatible with, with certain ontologies. Distributive equity implies that nature can be objectified and uh, exploited, and turned into a distributable good, a conception that is explicitly challenged in, in certain ontologies. So the struggle may not be about proper allocation of benefits and burden, but about what Arturo Escobar calls um, ontological struggles, or what Vandana Shiva calls struggles over worldviews. Now you can oppose to this critique that, that claims for distribution are, are rooted in, in the demands of, of EJ movements, particularly uh, in the US, um, and this is where the second part of our arguments comes in. Um, Franz Fanon's work shows that the effectiveness of colonialism lies in its capacity to capture the desire of, of the subjugated. So in other words, coloniality does not only function <coughs> sorry, through, through explicit violence and, and repressive means, it also operates via the, the consent of colonized people. Achille Membe calls this the, the subjugation of, of the indigenous through his or her desire. So taking this into account leads us to, to two new problems on a local scale, the call for environmental equity, even when it's distributively uh, offset, may, may actually lead to deliberate exposure to environmental harms, which, as actual Honneth has, has argued, can be a form of, of misrecognition. And some EJ scholars, such as David Schlossberg, have, have warned us about, about this. And on a global scale, the call for distribution may hide the fact that the exploitation of, of environmental resources for some people can only happen at the expense of other people. So to illustrate this, think of the following question. How do we, how do we distribute the negative impacts of extractivism, which, which is often what the exploitation of natural resources in the South um, looks like? So this is for the first point. And a good illustration of this is, is the struggle in, in Standing Rock, um, for which distributive solutions were not were not possible. It wasn't about distributing smaller pipelines uh, throughout the, the whole country. It was about not having pipelines at all because they would violate the rights of indigenous people and, and, and their lands. So to address some of the problems I just mentioned, EJ scholars have increasingly included the concept of, of recognition in their analytical frameworks, drawing uh, mainly on, on Nancy, Nancy Fraser's work. And, and this is great, but it also involved a number of, of problems from a decolonial perspective. First, it does not offer the, the tools to think of recognition beyond the state. Um, so having, having a voice within the state apparatus is, is important. Um, but, but recent environmental justice work has also shown that it can be counterproductive or even transform the demand of certain groups. So Glenn, Glenn Coulthard, for example, in his book, Red Skin, White Masks, um, shows how the position of Canadian indigenous communities towards extractive projects evolved from, from opposition to, to acceptance through these different processes of participation set up by the state. So there's a, a real need of, of, uh, of conceptualizing the struggle through, through non-state forms of power or through what some have, have called um, self-recognition, which we argue in the paper is not really possible by using the type of recognition Nancy Fraser talks about. There is a second problem with the use of recognition in EJ work, and that is that it downplays the role psychological processes play in misrecognition. So introducing the idea of self-recognition requires that we pay more attention to the subjective dimension of recognition, um, not just the objective structural one uh, that Fraser talks about. 
Fraser rejects this, this psychological dimension to avoid, she says, blaming, blaming the victim for the injustices he or she faces, and, and she's right. But drawing on, on Fanon again, um, one understands that, that psychological processes cannot be detached from these structural material conditions of misrecognition, and that the psychological structure results from a, a process of internalization of social conflicts. So in other words, the, the distorted identities of people may be the very cause of, of, of misrecognition and not just, and not just an effect. Then last point very quickly, all of these problems are, are related with um, the epistemological position of EJ scholars, um, which they take on deliberately or, or not. We have a tendency to position ourselves on what, what Santiago Castro Gomez calls um, point zero, and which he defines as the power to institute, to represent, to build a vision of the social and, and natural world uh, recognized as, as legitimate. Of course, no one here is, is claiming to be neutral or impartial in, 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 in observing uh, reality, but there is in EJ literature an, an ambivalent position about this. Um, other knowledges are acknowledged, uh, but, but environmental justice is seen as this original Western framework, which can then be adapted or tropicalized by others. Um, which leads to a situation in which there is no dialogue. The, the recognition of, of non-Western knowledge is, is pragmatic rather than, than um, epistemical. So these different points lead us to introduce a new concept, a new form of, of coloniality in, in the paper, which we have called uh, coloniality of justice, and which occurs when, when Western justice concepts are used as the main organizing principles of, of non-Western environmental justice movement at the expense of other uh, pre-existing conceptual formations. There are ways around it, some of which are already present in the EJ literature, but we argue that in order to avoid this coloniality of justice, EJ scholars may want to take a closer look at, at some uh, at the epistemological approaches discussed in, in decolonial theories, such as inter-epistemic studies, epistemical democracy, or, or cognitive justice, all of which try going beyond knowledge configuration recognized by, by academia. I will leave it here. Thank you for your attention, and, and do get in touch if, if, you're, if you're interested.